Look, I understand this instinct of people to gravitate towards Joe Biden because Donald Trump is so terrible. And it seems like lately Donald Trump has been more horrible than usual. So, I mean, orange man bad. I get it. I get it, right? Um, having said that, we can't lie to ourselves. I think we have to be realistic and temper our expectations. This man is not going to be the next FDR. Joe Biden is not going to govern as a progressive because we have an extensive history to look at to see how he's governed. And I'd be surprised if he was even as progressive as Obama. And Obama was no progressive. So, you know, the positive aspects of a Joe Biden administration are limited to, one, he's not Donald Trump, two, he will replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg most likely, and three, he'll handle COVID-19 like an adult. And that's fine, but don't expect, you know, more than we should. I think we have to be realistic. Now, part of being realistic about Joe Biden goes both ways. I also want to give him credit where it's due, because he recently commented on net neutrality. And his plan for net neutrality is surprisingly good. And whenever I hear about a policy position from Joe Biden that is, you know, outside the realm of what I stated as his positives, I'm always skeptical because this individual isn't necessarily known for being truthful, right? But in this area, he can actually really make a difference by just doing one simple thing, appointing an FCC chair that is not a jeet pie. Now, in the realm of net neutrality, what Joe Biden is promising is to actually go further than Barack Obama, and even if he personally chooses to abandon this issue, who he chooses as FCC chair can make all the difference, and what he's saying is that he doesn't just want to restore net neutrality, but he actually actively wants to encourage public municipal broadband, which would solve this issue permanently. And this would be a game changer. This would be a game changer. So I would add this to the positives of Joe Biden, and I'll explain a little bit more. But as John Egerton of Multi-Channel News reports, Joe Biden has signaled that if he becomes president, his FCC will restore the net neutrality rules and FCC oversight authority the Republican FCC jettisoned in the Restoring Internet Freedom Order, as well as working to undo state laws blocking municipal broadband and invest even more in those projects. The FCC is an independent agency, but Biden would get to choose the chairman and have the majority, so it is likely the pendulum would indeed swing back toward the net neutrality rules pushed by President Barack Obama, Biden's former boss. Biden also signaled he would not only fight state efforts that block municipalities and rural co-ops from building publicly owned broadband networks, but invested federal funds in muni broadband and for the Lifeline Universal Service Fund subsidy that goes to low-income income residents so children and families can fully participate in school, work, and life from their homes. As millions of Americans have stayed at home to prevent the spread of the pandemic, it is plain to see that in the 21st century, the internet is not optional. It is a vital tool for participating in the economy, and all Americans need access to high-speed affordable broadband service, the campaign said. Now, let's hold for a second, because the signal that we're getting about the way that his administration would go comes from a recommendation by the Unity Task Force. Now, you all know I was shitting on the Unity Task Force because this is just a recommendation that is printed off and handed to Joe Biden. So he can unilaterally choose to shoot it down. And considering the fact that he literally kicked off his campaign at the home of a Comcast executive, I'm not going to blame people for being skeptical of Joe Biden here and his intentions with regard to net neutrality. But yet, in spite of that, I'm still optimistic because I've followed this issue for a very long time and what the president does with regard to net neutrality, it doesn't necessarily matter as much as a lot of people would think. So Donald Trump, he does not know what net neutrality is. Going into the presidency, he made one comment about net neutrality on Twitter and he said something about, oh, this is just the fairness doctrine. So he said he's against it, but that clearly shows that he doesn't know what net neutrality is. So, I mean, the FCC chair has a relatively large degree of autonomy. And Trump, his administration dismantled net neutrality without him actually knowing what net neutrality is. So, let's assume that Joe Biden doesn't actually accept this recommendation. And even in saying this, he's lying. Well, that doesn't necessarily matter so long as he appoints an FCC chair who is pro-net neutrality. Now, there is an incentive, an incentive for Joe Biden to want to appoint someone who is pro-net neutrality to the chair of the FCC to replace Ajit Pai because his entire legacy was undone by Ajit Pai. So he has an interest in securing his legacy. And on top of that, 
Look at Jessica Rosenworcel as one of the options here. So she's currently an FCC commissioner, and all Joe Biden has to do is name her as Ajit Pai's replacement, which is something that isn't out of the realm of possibility. She's certainly someone who he'd consider, and she would actually do wonders. Now, I will say this, that Jessica Rosenworcel, who's a current FCC commissioner, she wasn't always the biggest ally to net neutrality. Because let me remind you, back in the Obama years, he appointed a Comcast lobbyist to be the FCC chair, Tom Wheeler. And he appointed Tom Wheeler after Tom Wheeler donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to him or fundraised hundreds of thousands of dollars for Barack Obama. So that appointment was the result of corruption. And one of the first things that Tom Wheeler tried to do was dismantle net neutrality by introducing fast lanes, which was a way of allowing internet service providers to carve out these types of packages, not necessarily explicitly in the way that, you know, Ajit Pai's rules would have allowed, but just by saying, hey, if you pay us more, we'll give you faster internet for this website. When that's not okay, that undermines net neutrality. But what happened was Tom Wheeler ended up becoming one of the biggest allies to the net neutrality movement ever, and he gave activists everything that they wanted because he succumbed to public pressure. They were protesting in front of his house, and the campaign that net neutrality activists mounted against him was highly successful, so much so that not only did he declare the internet a public utility, but he went even further than that and started to regulate zero rating, which basically allows cell phone carriers like Verizon to undermine net neutrality in a roundabout way using zero rating because they can say, hey, us at Verizon here, we have this brand new streaming service and if you use our streaming service, this isn't going to count towards your data. But if you use Netflix, that will count towards your data. So, I mean, this is anti-consumer. It's anti-competitive. It allows these types of, you know, cell phone providers and internet service providers to basically rig the rules in their favor and give themselves the advantage that other competitors don't have. So, Tom Wheeler started to, you know, hone his craft a little bit, really zero in uh, on these types of practices. And Jessica Rosenworcel was a part of the Obama administration. She was part of that Tom Wheeler era where they were aggressively trying to make the internet more free and open. So even if back in 2015, she kind of downplayed the importance of municipal broadband saying, oh, well, you know, this is something that I don't want to, you know, get people's hopes up about, but it seems kind of unlikely because it's difficult to do the infrastructure and whatnot and building it would be a hassle. Now things have changed. She wasn't an ally. But now she is. And if Joe Biden only did one thing with regard to net neutrality and made Jessica Rosenworcel the FCC chair and replaced Ajit Pai, he could fulfill all of the promises that he's saying now and then some because he's not actually the one that's doing it. It's Jessica Rosenworcel who we do actually trust to do what he's saying he wants to do. And it would be great if Biden secured funds to encourage municipal broadband, but I'm not necessarily optimistic about that. I think that he has a lot of lobbyists in his ear that will kill that initiative. But even if Biden doesn't follow through with that promise, Jessica Rosenworcel can choose to unilaterally promote municipal broadband. She doesn't need Joe Biden's permission. She can act autonomously, independent of what Joe Biden wants. She can unilaterally take the FCC in any direction she wants. Now, if Trump is re-elected, Ajit Pai will remain the FCC chair most likely unless he chooses to resign. And whoever is elevated, it's going to be who Trump chooses. It may be, you know, Michael Riley, who's another anti-net neutrality goon. And maybe Brendan Carr was also another shill for the industry. Jessica Rosenworcel, assuming Biden is actually elected, she would likely be the next FCC chair. And it would be a game changer. Even if Biden... Uh, doesn't choose to do anything about net neutrality, even if he says nothing else about net neutrality for the rest of his administration if he's elected. Jessica Rosenworcel can act independently. I mean, Tom Wheeler, he, even though Obama's stance, their administration's official stance was pro-net neutrality, he was trying to tear down net neutrality. And he was doing this without Obama's explicit consent. And it wasn't until, you know, activists started putting pressure on him and Obama kind of signaled support for net neutrality tepidly that Tom Wheeler switched gears. So it doesn't really matter what Joe Biden wants to do. Jessica Rosenworcel would be steering the ship here. So in conclusion, like all of this considered, Joe Biden would be, I think, a really positive force for net neutrality, even if he chooses to abandon his promise. Now, 
you know, with that being said, there is the possibility that Joe Biden, you know, um, once he's in, let's say he elevates Jessica Rosenworcel and makes her FCC chairwoman. And then, you know, a bunch of Comcast lobbyists who are already in his ear get in his head and say, hey, you don't you don't want to undo these net neutrality repeals. I mean, come on, you know, that's a possibility. And he could try to, like, control what Jessica Rosenworcel does or whoever else he appoints. But at the same time, is that something that I think he would focus a lot of effort on? Not necessarily, because as we've seen from Obama and Trump, they don't really focus on this issue a lot. I mean, the FCC chairperson has been the driver of net neutrality uh, regulatory standards. This is true for Tom Wheeler, and it was true for Ajit Pai. He chose to single-handedly repeal net neutrality. So I just don't think that the president is going to be really focused on this. So I mean... I give credit where it's due. At least he's saying the right thing now. And even if he doesn't do the right thing and follow through on this promise, it's still a good sign for net neutrality. It's still really important to have him in power if we want to secure net neutrality. So, hey, I'll hand it to him here. This is the exact right thing. And for him to suggest that he would promote local co-ops, I mean, I'll believe that when I see it. But just the fact that he appoints someone who would be more open-minded to it than Ajit Pai, that's a good thing. That's a step in the right direction. So, hey... I've been critical of Joe Biden. I think he's a disgusting human being for not supporting Medicare for all. But you get credit for this, at least. This is a, a very positive thing. You know... You... You... You know... You know the... You know the thing... thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.